it's not always about being virtual. It's about productivity anywhere. So it's about finding the people who are the absolute best people for the job for your company and then working to make them productive wherever they need to be to be productive, right? So some people have to come into an office two days a week or, or full time even. Some people never want to see you. They only want to check in over a video conference, you know, so it's about putting that together. And if your company has to be fully virtual or fully in person, you have to hire for those people. But if you're choosing one or the other, you're really limiting your access to talent because you're really you're kind of shrinking the pool of people you can choose from. Hi, everyone, and welcome to season five of Stand Up and Stand Out. Can you believe it? Are you to season five? It has been a whirlwind year already. A lot has happened. Uh, you guys know after listening to season four that I just launched Chameleon Mindset, my new book about how to embrace change and build mental resilience to transform your life and career. Lots more information, obviously, coming on Chameleon Mindset. We'll have the new online course coming soon. We've been doing lots of webinars and I'll be on the road for the book tour. So hopefully I'll get to catch up together soon. Um, but uh, because why not just do another one? <laughs> I have another book that just came out, The Great Lead Hership Awakening. In this book, I collaborated with uh, 20 other amazing women. Each of them contributed to chapter talking about when their lead hership was awakened and part of their transformation, maybe over the pandemic or maybe over a longer period of time, uh, really stepping into their power and showing what it means to truly be a leader. Hello everyone, and welcome back to season five of Stand Up and Stand Out. As you guys know, we are interviewing the wonderful women of the great leadership awakening. So excited. And we've got one of the wonderful women in each chapter coming on for an episode of this season's podcast so we can get to hear a little bit behind the scenes about their chapter and get to know them a little bit better. So today we have Cecilia. She's a seasoned entrepreneur and passionate leader who has spent over two decades driving the success of virtual teams. With her extensive experience, practical skills, and wealth of research to draw upon, Cecilia has a deep understanding of what it takes to empower leaders to effectively manage and motivate their teams, regardless of location. Might be a little handy these days. <laughs> so say hi to everybody, Cecilia. Hi, Nikki. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be on your show. Awesome. And if you guys are checking in the book, um, her chapter is number seven, and it is Navigating the Workplace Revolution, Leading Virtual Teams in the New Paradigm. So I'm sure uh, you get a lot of calls to speak right now <laughs> to talk about this topic. Um, so why don't you share a little bit of insight to your chapter, why you decided to be a part of the book, um, and what you want to contribute to the story? Yeah, thank you, Nikki. And definitely, it's a hot topic lately, especially yeah. post-pandemic. I, I really do believe, and I did see, that virtual teams were happening before the pandemic. And certainly for me, my whole company went virtual back in 2008. But what happened in 2020 just catapulted everything into the present and fast forwarded that. And for leaders, we need to change. Change is here. We need to look at the way that we lead people and the way that we hire people and retain top talent differently. And when this opportunity came around to participate in this amazing book, this really stood out for me as what I wanted to share because I had been through it. Back in 2008, before it was the thing to do with my team, when we were forced to close down seven offices around the country and send all these people to work from home. And I thought for sure it was going to be the end of us. Didn't know how we were going to do this. I, I thought we were already as efficient as we could possibly be. I believed that we needed those offices and I never saw the path to success with a virtual team. And once we got into it, boy, was it amazing what happened when we went virtual and when people had the opportunity to be productive on their own terms, we just soared. And it didn't come easy. And there are a lot of lessons to learn. But I'm so excited for businesses today who now have the opportunity to really revisit how we're looking at our talent and how we're looking at leading our talent in this new paradigm where you can have access to anybody, anywhere, at any time that fits your team just perfectly. It's an exciting time for leaders. 
Uh, it absolutely is. And this is really one of those great things of there are going to continue to be bumps in the road, whether it's a recession, hopefully not a lot more pandemics. But, you know, there are going to be bumps either, you know, more economically or politically or even just in your own individual business in your industry. And I think it's so important that you talk about this as an opportunity to adapt. It's it's time for us to not just like, OK, you know, set it and forget it and our business will just run and everything's going to be exactly the same day in and day out. That'd be nice. But that's not realistic, especially with advances in technology and so many new things coming it's important that we stay alert as business owners and as managers to make sure we're staying on top of these things so that we even have, you know, somewhat contingency plans, you know, obviously when it can't predict the future, but we can like look at the past a little bit and know some of these things are cyclical even in nature, right? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it's so easy to fall into a comfort zone and just kind of feel like, and, and I was guilty of this, you know, and I, I look back now and I remember my investors asking me for years, do you have to have all those offices? And I've really convinced myself, well, we have to have a physical presence. Where are our customers going to go? Where are we going to put all our stuff? Yeah, we need those offices. It, you know, gives us, we're just a startup, so we need to have that visibility. And they were kind of always going, I don't know, I don't know. And, and when we had to shut them down, I was terrified. But the reality is change is good, even though it hurts but sometimes, you know? And it's amazing when you empower people to do things on their own terms, what they can do. And I run into it a lot with companies that are looking to maybe go virtual. And the managers will say, oh, it'll never work here. No, 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 it'll never work here. We're already as efficient as we can be. This is just not going to work for us. And I hear it over and over again. And it's, it's unfortunate because I do think that to stay competitive, to continue to attract the top talent and retain them and keep people happy, you have to make this transition. And also, Nikki, it's not always about being virtual. It's about productivity anywhere. So it's about finding the people who are the absolute best people for the job for your company and then working to make them productive wherever they need to be to be productive, right? So some people have to come into an office two days a week or, or full time even. Some people never want to see you. They only want to check in over a video conference. You know, so it's about putting that together. And if your company has to be fully virtual or fully in person, you have to hire for those people. But if you're choosing one or the other, you're really limiting your access to talent because you're really you're kind of shrinking the pool of people you can choose from. It, it's absolutely true. Um, you know, and I work for a lot of big um, Silicon Valley global companies. So I really made it a point to go and visit the local offices to understand, you know, the difference of what was going on there and you know, what the talent pool was like so that when I built my team, I didn't just say, oh, they have to be right here in San Jose, you know, so I can go stare at them all day. Have the time I wasn't there anyways. You know, I was also traveling. So it was great to really expand my thought of where my team could be to get the best talent. And, you know, one of the companies I work for, we had a main office in Omaha and people are like, oh, why are you going to Omaha? I was like, no, no, no. Most of these people have been with the company 10, 15 years. You want to talk about experience, deep knowledge of how the systems work, things that need to be improved. This is where the talent is. People in San Jose don't stay for more than five minutes. So if you're looking for longevity to really build a long term team, you, you kind of want to rethink again, you know, what you're thinking about these things and what's the end goal of putting, you know, these people together. So I, I love that you're kind of helping people rethink this. And really accessing talent from anywhere. There are so many wonderful people that really just want to stay close to home or they need to stay close to parents that are ill or you never know like what's going on, but they still need to work and provide for their families. So let's make that happen. Right? Absolutely. And to, and with to, you mentioned it earlier with technology today, it's so possible to work from anywhere at any time and to be productive anywhere. It really is. It's, it, you know, five years ago, it wasn't as easy, but just the advances in the last five years alone have made it so easy. Yeah. Well, and you talked about, um, too, you know, kind of where maybe senior leadership or maybe, you know, generational differences might exist about being in the office. But another thing I saw in Silicon Valley is, you know, these elaborate headquarters being made that were basically to keep people in the office more often. And it was a tribute to the ego of the leaders. It, it had very little to do with the employees and their actual comfort. It was like, well, if they can w wash their clothes here, you know, and go to the gym, then they can stay here 90 hours a week instead of, you know, 50. It's like, is that better for them? 
And you know what? It's really not better for productivity in the long run. It's really not. And people burn out. And today's generation of sort of up and coming leaders, the people who are joining the, the workforce now and are growing, they have a good perspective on how they want their lives to be. And you're no longer thinking, oh, I want to be like, you know, my boss, Joe, who worked so hard. Now he can work seven days a week and never go home. I want to be that guy. <laughs> they don't want to be that guy. They want to have balance. And I said I had people who worked for me that would do things like take off for four months to go volunteer and work while they were away and they were being fulfilled. And back in the day, you know, in 2008, back in the day, you know, um, I, you know, I guess that was sort of unheard of. And what I learned is that the team, they would do anything to keep those roles where they had that kind of freedom and they had the ability to work on their own terms. And they just became so powerful as a team and they worked much more efficiently and they were so committed. It was incredible the things that they were able to accomplish. And I didn't have to worry. I could say, you know, you could be sitting on a beach in Tahiti for all I care. I have hired you to produce this result for this money. Do we agree that you can do it? And if so, then we're good. And, and that's the other thing with virtual teams is it becomes very important to have clarity around what you're paying people to do. Not how many hours they're going to sit in that seat in the office in Silicon Valley with the M&Ms ar across the hallway in the break room. You know, you're paying for a result. And that's also a very challenging shift in mindset for leaders, because a lot of times leaders maybe will take people who are low on tasks and move them and reposition them. You got to really focus in on what am I hiring you to do? That way you see the result, you know they're working and everything is good. Otherwise, things start to go south pretty quickly on a virtual team. E easily. And, and I saw that time and time again. And it's it's so important. And, you know, it's really forcing managers and leaders to step up and rethink the way that they manage. And, and over across, I think so many times I wasn't compensated as a manager for developing and making sure my employees had clarity on their roles. And that we were able to really clearly articulate why is this person getting a promotion and this person isn't because we just threw kind of the kitchen sink at everybody all the time. And it evolved, you know, from one week to the next because we were just sort of plugging holes or taking over more projects. And that's just not going to work. It's just not smart. We, we're not doing as much multitasking or doing as many, you know, things parallel as we think we are. Let's just do a couple things really well and be really clear who's working on them. I'm so glad you brought that up because there are two things that are involved here. The first is that companies need to recognize that when you have leaders who are leading virtual teams, they need dedicated time because it takes time and intention and planning to grow those teams, nurture those teams, build the trust, make sure that all of those metrics that you're trying to measure and the very clear deliverables are outlined and understood. So for one, you can't just be a person doing and then also managing all the time. It has to be really set out. These virtual leaders need time to manage. The other thing for leaders, it is a transition because it takes a little bit of courage for a leader. No, it takes a lot of courage to let go because you have to let go of that control. You don't have that these are my people and I'm looking over them and I can see what they're doing and I know that they're working because they're still at their desk at seven o'clock at night. You have to trust that people are going to deliver for you. And that is a courageous move to become a virtual leader because you kind of lose visibility and you just have to start to work and think a little differently. So I would say thank you for bringing that up because those are two really core important things to know. Yeah. And, and I tried to talk to my leadership team to represent that as a manager because you know, I was a director and I was being compared to other directors who were in San Jose and 100 percent of their team was in San Jose that they saw most of the time. You know, they still had flexibility to work from home. But my team was 40 people across seven time zones. And most of them were fairly young, you know, a lot of analysts are kind of just coming into their roles. And so one of the things I first had to learn is a change in communication style is we moved to WhatsApp and Slack and some of these more instant messaging type things so that we could keep people more abreast across the whole team. What was happening? so and so sick. Can somebody jump in and cover? There's an urgent meeting. Can you guys jump on? Or, hey, by the way, Nikki needs a day off and you guys are running the show. And, and it's those important things of, you know, it's not just email. You can't just run things that way. It's really rethinking your entire like management, communication style, cadence, 
in all those things of how you're interacting. And then for the leadership to recognize, you know, that the leaders that are doing really well at this also need to be better compensated and, you know, supported. Better compensated, supported, and be provided with the tools that you need, right? Because your team required a different set of communication tools, probably than the folks who are sitting in Silicon Valley all the time. And then for you also to to just take that, take those tools to your team and make sure it works for them, right? Because it's it's a it's kind of a whole group exercise to say, when I Slack you, do I expect to hear back in an hour, in a day, in a week? I mean, some people, a week is okay, but until you have that dialogue with your team, you don't know. You have to set those parameters and have kind of an agreement with people that, hey, if I send you a Slack, I expect to hear within a day or an hour or 30 minutes. If I send you an email, you've got three days. And if you don't respond in three days, then I'm going to know to follow up with you because maybe you missed it. It's really difficult. It's one of those things you lose all that visibility of what people are doing and how much they have on their plates when you can't look over and see them sweating over a stack of files on their desk. So if you don't hear back from someone for a few days, you might think, what are they doing? You know, and the reality is that's why it's really important to have those better communication tools or more appropriate communication tools that your organization needs to support you in acquiring. And then also those agreements with your team about what do we expect from each other when we do communicate together and how are we going to know that we're all in sync? Because when you have that, you can start to build trust. And trust is just the most foundational element of all of this. You have to have trust on that team. Hi, everyone. My name is Nikki Green, and I am a life and business resiliency expert. I have been helping people for over two decades overcome their challenges and achieve their life and business goals. I wrote Chameleon Mindset for others seeking clarity while acclimating to new situations. This entertaining yet research-based guide to transitions will open your mind to unique strategies for finding purpose and achieving your goals. Through my new book, you will create the happy life you desire with five philosophies for change, beginning with C for creative adaptability. Move from resistance to resilience by assessing and adjusting your risk tolerance. The practical lessons in Chameleon Mindset will help you shift your mindset, sharpen your skill set, and overcome the things holding you back from dealing with change. We'll have the new online course coming soon. There are half a dozen modules in total, but the way you choose to pursue your destiny, it's up to you. Each module can be done independently or repeated as necessary to tackle new obstacles and new goals in your life. And you can earn extra chameleon coins for uncovering them. What are chameleon coins, you might ask? These are reward XP that you can earn to purchase additional chameleon mindset benefits as you progress through the course. You can get swag, group coaching, one-on-one coaching, exclusive event tickets, and networking opportunities. And if you collect enough coins, you can even earn a full day VIP intensive with me to work solely on your goals. And by joining the Chameleon Crew, you will also gain access to my network of thousands of influential people around the world with expertise to help you on your business, your personal endeavors, health and fitness, and so much more. Reserve a copy today and click below to be added to our subscriber list. I totally agree. And it was something I was very fortunate. I had some really great managers when I first started. And one of my first jobs, I was doing financial planning. And so, you know, when you're trading for people, it's time sensitive. So, you know, he had an obligation like you must respond to all emails within 24 hours because you never know if there's like a trade, you know, in there that you need to be making. And so I kind of took that into my corporate job and I was like, oh, this is not going to work at any scale, you know. So but I still had an obligation of like I'm trying to stay on top of the key things. Right. And so, again, as I'm communicating with my team, making sure, like you said, let's be really clear, even if I send you a Slack message, like, I know if you've read it, like, I don't need you to respond right away. Or also, it's free to tell me I'm busy right now, or I got to go take the kids to school. All those things are perfectly acceptable, like just as a level of communication. It was kind of funny because I was actually giving this talk at a conference with HR professionals. And, um, you know, talking about generational differences in communication and one person after the Q&A, he's like, yeah, I have this employee and, you know, he just wants to constantly send emails and he never gets on the phone, you know, with the customer. And I want him to just get on the phone and solve things. And I said, have you gotten on the phone with the employee (laughs) to tell them that? No, but I sent him an email. You got to enact the behavior as well, right? And make sure that you're emulating, you know, the style that you want to see from your employees. Absolutely. And different. Different situations require different communication methods, right? So 
in that particular case, yeah, probably even a video call would have been good because even on the phone, you lose a lot of context when you can't see the person, you know, and I, I had this situation happen to me when I had sold my last company and I was starting another joint venture. Uh, it, this was way before the pandemic. But I would call my clients and I was the and we were using Zoom and I was the only person using my video. But I always had my video on because I wanted them to see that I was engaged. The pandemic came and all of a sudden everybody's videos were on all of a sudden and people became so comfortable. And it, I could feel the difference in my relationships with my clients and with my business partners who are in London, who they were, by the way, also never on video. And I just felt immediately so much more connected with them. Back in 2008, we didn't have Zoom, so we didn't have the benefit of it. But boy, that's a powerful thing. If you can get someone on video, I mean, the connection is just exponentially deeper instantly. And, you know, yes, texting and emailing is OK under certain circumstances. And definitely there's a whole generational thing going. But if you've got something you really need to communicate, if you can get someone on a video call, it's like gold. It really is. So it's amazing. It's really important. And a lot of young people that I work with, you know, they're like, oh, I'm introverted or, you know, I don't like being on camera or, you know, a thousand excuses start to pop up. And I say, you know, they're so or I'm busy with the kids or whatever the things are. Right. And I said, it's actually really important, even when I had midnight staff meetings, you know, because we were trying to cross both Europe and Asia and the U.S. time zones. You know, I'm I'm in my PJs and and I don't look great. There's no makeup. There's no, you know. And I want you to know that. I want you to know that this is an inconvenient time for me, but I'm trying to make it convenient for you because I know you've also done the same. It's important for them to know your kid, your cat, your whatever, like is crawling all over your screen and you're trying to focus, but you also have other obligations. Bringing home that real like human part of all of these conversations, I think starts to human our conversation and humanize us and and get us to better communicate just visually, too, without having to say the words. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, when you get that personal element in, because when you are working remote, it does really help build that trust because they start people start to see each other as people and friends in a way, even though they're colleagues. And it's not like, you know, Joe down the hall who keeps his door closed all the time and I see him in the boardroom. You actually know hey, they've got, you know, a Philadelphia Flyers shirt on the wall. And I kind of like the Philadelphia Flyers or whatever it is. I don't even know why I chose that. But, you know, just as an example, or uh, I was on a call earlier today where someone had a, a plastic beagle on the shelf. And who knew someone else was connected because they were a beagle person, too. And it just you just build that relationship and it just builds a little bit more trust each and every time it happens. And you start to work more efficiently and you start to collaborate a little bit more and things on the team start to kind of just be easier when you know and trust each other at a personal level. And sometimes it takes pajamas and cats and kids climbing all over you, you know, and that's OK. I think that's very acceptable in the workplace today that people understand there are going to be distractions and you can't always be in this sort of, you know, chamber of peace and quiet when you're on a Zoom call. It's just not realistic. Yeah. Well, and it was happening before, but it was happening up here. And maybe you didn't know, really know what everyone was really dealing with behind the scenes. And so I think it's important that we have a little bit more of this vulnerability so we can get to know each other better, support each other, both personally and professionally, and all be, you know, more productive and and happy in our careers and our lives, you know, together. I think it's it's really great. Um, well, time flies when we're having fun. I can't believe that they, we could talk about this forever. I feel like this is one of those topics. So many. Yeah, for sure. Well, I certainly could. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no, this is great. Um, and, you know, I just I'm really fascinated. I know there's more folks within our audience that are probably interested in learning, you know, more about how to, you know, work remotely effectively and, you know, maybe live on a boat like you, which is awesome. <laughs> I think that's fascinating. Um, and just see the world more. I think the more we experience life, the better off we can also be, you know, personally and professionally. Um, but as a, a quick sign off, um, just any last parting words and then where can folks find you if they'd like to learn more about you or maybe have you come speak on their podcast or um, event? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Well, uh, yeah, for sure. I work with a lot of teams on how to adapt to working with remote and be efficient. And as I, as I said, it's productivity anywhere. It's not always remote, but whether you're remote or hybrid or, you know, anywhere you need people to get product productive, that's where I come in. 
Uh, you can reach me at www.ceciliadahl.com. And I would love to hear from anyone, speak with you, come in, work with your team. And I really appreciate the opportunity, Nikki, today to, to chat with you and especially about this amazing book project, The Great Leadership Awakening, which is filled from cover to cover with incredible stories from incredible women who have or who are just changing the leadership paradigm. Uh, absolutely. If you guys haven't gotten your copy, it's available on Amazon now. We'll have all of um, your information in the show notes so that people can click on the links and go over and say hi to you. Also in the book, um, there's about the author after every single chapter. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. This has been really a pleasure to just collaborate and meet all of these wonderful women in the book and create our own virtual team together, even though we all have our own businesses. But I do feel like we are a team now and amazing things are going to come from this network opportunity. And uh, who knows what the next book is going to bring. That's great. Thanks for having me, Nikki. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today for another episode of Stand Up and Stand Out. You know you can catch us where all the cool kids hang out that do podcasts on all the major platforms. And if you want to connect with Nikki directly, you can get a hold of me on my personal site, the nikkigreen 360com There you can check out my website. You can see any of my new books. You can learn more about this podcast and follow us on social. Can't wait to hear from you. And we'll see you on the next episode. Bye.